In me, all is Flemish, save for the language that I use, which is accidental. My position as a writer of French expression in a Belgian land where there is no Belgian language is that of a popinjay on its perch. I am not a Belgian writer, nor a writer from Belgium, nor a writer in Belgium. I am a man who writes in a room. Each one sees, each one hears what pleases him. Once I caught a glimpse of paradise, but I have never obliged anyone to believe me. But death, it's still the death of the Middle Ages. It's the same. One no longer makes out of it a processional character or a popular game. One gives it a scientific aspect. One can give it a white apron, rubber gloves, make it a kind of superposition, Dr. Miracle in reverse. Parsifal has given way to a melodious gangster. I am conscious of belonging to an ancient world. This present time certainly has its myth, but I am badly placed to know it. I have always written plays as it suited me, in accordance with my perspective. Even an imaginary audience which perhaps had existed or could exist one day, not for an immediate public. A city of the past and of the future in Flanders, of the 16th and 20th centuries simultaneously. Faust's lofty and gloomy chamber. Faust is in his classic costume. One cannot for an instant believe him real, and if he seems living it is because he is playing badly. He appears to be a clown. to whom a tragedian's role has been entrusted. Masked, you are true. Enough, enough, enough! Enough. Give me different words, a different dress. There's been a mistake. It's been going on for too long. Beyond all question, I'm becoming a freak. Too much solitude. One ends up by coming across oneself. And now, set up. Set fire to the fire! Praise the tones of the ground! Everything's false! It will have to be done all over again. To die is not a solution. And to live on is to continue to betray myself! <laughs> I do that very well. And why this desire for the absolute? This endlessly sublime and, and puerile dribble of the soul. Oh, oh, I'm infinitely ridiculous. 
petty me. And at bottom, I don't suffer as I should. In truth, I am not in my place. Ah, 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 ah. Nor in my dress. Ah, 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 ah. Nor in my era. Ah, ah, ah. Good. Now faster. Faster still. That's a good occupation for you. Heavenly bodies of all sizes, unknown humanities, past worlds, future worlds, forwards. <laughs> I was born, and a thousand masks are put on laughing so as not to sneer. Columbus became a synthesis of all the travelers, all the wanderers, all the erratics of his age, and of all ages. I am going to enter a great silence, a long darkness. I am going to sail on supernatural waters. Christopher Columbus. I have an uncommon name that sounds like a famous one. Bubbles Columbus. Yes. Who are you? The press. The world is round, isn't it? Are you convinced? I have faith in the stars. Your face of these words, you were sublime. I wasn't thinking of anything. Men like you were sensational, and that's what's needed. Sensational men. The stars? Indeed, what a lovely night. So, it's round? It's tragic. You realize this will upset people's habits. It's only tragic for idiots. As for habits, people will acquire others. Time I went. The true motive of this journey is that I am weary. Yes, I am setting out for another world. But you must realize it is not my ambition to discover one. I believe that the theater is a sort of ideal, almost religious, ceremonial, where mankind who has lost confidence in all religions, all social and philosophical systems, can take refuge. I discovered the world of forms before discovering the world of ideas, that of public demonstrations, cortege, processions, fairs, strikes, routes, funerals, liturgical displays, carnivals. I equally considered a great deal of importance to furniture, to clothes, to decoration, to the world of things that are believed to be dead. I went to the theater from necessity. The form turned out to suit me. I didn't choose it, it chose me. That is the truth. One doesn't choose, or so little. However, it was painting, giving colors to form that led me towards the art of the theater. I very quickly made my choice in the galleries and naturally I went to the works of my country those of the master Hieronymus Bosch, of Bruegel, of Teniers, of Jordans. 
And of course, that contemporary master, James Enzo, who was born and died in Ostend. Thus, a number of my theatrical works were born, no, not from an intellectual emotion, but a visual one. Often I travel to that ancient and erratic city of the north, Bruges, where the bells and the carillon are innumerable, and where, more than anywhere else, they speak well, are eloquent. There, in this medieval city, which hasn't changed much, I lived in the sound of these carillon recitals, storm of chimes, funeral forges of all saints. The Flanders I loved abided in this, nothing but this. It was the theater of the Elizabethans that took hold of me. They hold up to us an infinitely complex and contradictory humanity, florid in color, and strong in order. I was even more attracted to the theater of Spain because of its action and because it spoke freely of Flanders. This dramatist taught the fledging author to free himself from the rules, to raise the curtain on something new, to break the conventional frame of the theater. join in your games, but I must finish burnishing this sword. Splendid blade, isn't it? Got it from a second hand dealer. It's too big for you, your honor. <laughs> It'll bounce on the road and make more noise than a string of saucepans on a mongrel's tail. I know I'm suffering from a rare sickness that no pilgrimage can cure. I'm shriveling. My skeleton is shrinking with the years. <laughs> Tropical, isn't it? I am becoming porous. I'm crumbling away. You shall soon see mushrooms sprouting from my head. Nothing, alas, can come from my hands except the bitter and convulsed. I would make marble grimace like stone. Oh, I, I conceive th th this new expression of beauty. I see it and cannot translate it. I survive as those cathedrals survive that were once upon a time white, but have grown opaque and blackened and will be knocked down when they are crumbling. Give him a wooden sword. Do you want him to injure himself? <laughs> 
the executioner! Who's the executioner? Why are they unfolding that red sheet? What are they going to do with my husband? It's a very old sport. Hop, husband. Up he goes, hop. Up he goes again and falls again. The rhythm is there. He is already oh. higher than their heads. Oh. My senior, tossed in a blanket. Wonderful sport. Not a man just leaping in the sky. A doll. Oh. Higher, hop, leap, rise up. Higher, hop. That was your ambition. As high as the cathedral. Hop, senior. What's happening? Why are they no longer shouting in the square? This dismal groaning. Le siège d'Ostend. Épopée militaire pour marionnettes. Composé en son temps par Don Adimardo Adolfo Luis de Gelderode, capitaine des francs piquiers royaux au service de l'Espagne, ancien combattant du siège et décoré de divers ordres illustres, retrouvé dans les archives de Sa Majesté catholique. The lesson of marionettes is an initial lesson of the theater. Whoever wants to mount the stage must have the humility to descend into the cellars to make a pact of friendship. The theater of marionettes is the original theater in its oral state, bound organically to the dramatic action as to the breath, the play of lips with the punctuation of fingers. Mankind has appeared to me as but a batch of puppets, farces or dramas, as well as offering the eternity of their gestures and the imbecilic immobility of their faces shaped in the same model. Beyond all that, there was someone that I have searched for for so long without ever finding. I search and search, and truly I believe that some terrible chance alone was moving the string of the puppets. But as before, I am still searching, and always searching for the one who works the puppet strings, relegated to the depths of the cellars of nothingness. I am searching for destiny, and I haven't seen it. Farce! Who's loaded me with this upright mannequin? Oh, what foul leaves inside this corpse? Answer me, Eremo! Dead or alive? False corpse! Imposter, even in your death! What do you want? Prayers? Have you seen hell, huh? Have you swallowed your tongue? Are thoughts going to burst from your throat? Automate no spectre, expect nothing from me, nothing!
The ghost is suffocating. The horse which he has received in hate and not with love is throttling him. This horse which can neither be brought up nor go down and burn the dying man whom heaven and hell think back by reason of this handkerchief communion? No! This living man lives no more, and this dead man is not dead. He is suspended in time as a host is in his body. Erimo! 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 Yann! Erimo! from the dead. <laughs> Kneel down. Spit out what was tormenting you. Come along, Jan, and come and die. Forgive them, if you want your forgiveness. Absolve them. Your mother is ordering you to do it. Stretch yourself out, my child. Dead man is dead. Jan Ineremo, Bishop of Lapideopolis, is dead by his true as violent death. Dead. Twice dead. Thoroughly dead. And death, patient and solemn, mixes little heaps of phosphorus with his forefinger. Necrology. It happens to us all. We consider ourselves in a mirror and ask ourselves who we are. What is our real face? I no longer wish to conceal the one that life has made for me. It's taken me 40 years to form this face. But it's that we have several. We frequently change our face and we will never reduce this aspect of one's being to one sole mask. We are not double, but multiple. 
And it's in this aspiration to unity that is found the most secret and devouring worry of man, the chagrin of not being what he is. And these masks will take their vengeance upon you. So difficult to make this abyss resound. Non, nous vivons un siècle sans férie. Non, we are living in an age lacking in marvelous. Cet auteur à l'existence dramatique, Michel de Gelderode, seul de son espèce et dernier de son nom. N'imitez pas son exemple et abstinez-vous de penser à lui dans vos prières. Du fond de l'infini, il vous emmerde infiniment. 